Hey, this is Kirk Hilliard. It's Rusty Bird. It's the Kirk and Bird Show. And we are here today with Brentsfield Lady Tigers soccer coach Scott Kearns. To the show, Scott. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you for giving Brentsville some love. Oh, yeah, man. Look, once we jumped on this Brentsville bandwagon, you can see we just like, oh, okay, they're rolling. Five or six Brentsville episodes now. So. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're legit, man. Wow, y'all are doing great. So, yeah, so uh, it's make Kirk is aware that I've known Scott for years, so I will probably tend to talk way too much because he's not just a great coach, but he's also a family friend. Uh, but so I'm really happy to have you on the show because I actually told you <clears> – <throat> A little over a year ago, when you were a part of Leah's surprise birthday party, uh, my wife, uh, I was like, hey, I kind of got a podcast. It's doing OK. I want to get you on the show. And uh, and and Kirk, I mean, Scott was like, yeah, right. Whatever. No, he didn't. <laughs> you got to no, win, win to get on the show, you know? Yeah, just, <laughs> well, yeah I didn't have a lot to talk about last year. <laughs> <laughs> your history. Let's talk about this season for Brentsville. This is your first year coaching the Brentsville girls. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, well, actually, this is this is my sixth year, actually, with Brentsville. I've been helping out with the JV team and as assistant coach. But, yeah, it's my first time, you know, with the head coaching job here. And uh, um, it's been a really fun, successful year. I mean, we've had a really nice year and um, good wins against big schools which mm-hmm. we love going out and playing some of the bigger schools, had tough wins against Gainesville, tough win against Woodbridge. I think our most impressive win of the year was uh, defeating Broad Run, who was the defending 4A state champ at the time. Wow. Um, and that was a nice little come behind, come from behind win. We actually were down one nothing at the half and showed a little bit of grit and determination to get back into that game. And um, that's a good win for a program like us. Yeah, absolutely. That, they're, they're really good. Um, They've won a number of state titles. Mm-hmm. Kind of tell us about your team, what you all excel in, and what you think you all need to do for next Sunday to say, if if you do these things, you'll be the state champions. Not saying you're predicting that, but obviously that's your goal. So, Coach, what do you all need to do again? We are really strong in our midfield, and I think, uh, you know, you hear it all, it's a little cliche, but – you know, at this point of the year, especially with some of the injuries we're dealing with, our best players really are going to have to be the best players on the field. And I think they have the potential to do that. I mean, we have some kids that are just fantastic players. Um, but it's, it's you know, June is tough. I told the kids the other day, you know, we didn't play great against Meridian in the regional championship. But, you know, I told them, I said, June is tough, man. Once you get to June, everybody's good. It's hot. It's emotional. Um, you know, every mistake gets, you know, you feel it a little bit more and all the success, you feel it a little bit more, um, you know, so you really, you know, emotionally, mentally, you got to, you know, keep it together and make sure you're, you're, you know, staying in tune with the game. And, you know, I think those things are going to be important. Now, I, I know um, I referee high school basketball and have done a lot of Meridian games. I've done, I've had them in state quarters and semifinals in the past uh, in basketball. And I know that's a great tradition. So when Kayla got over that hump <laughs> and beating them in, in yeah. the, it was a semi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. You know what? That's right. Because they lost to them in the regional final. Then had to go on the road when the quarterfinal then went there, yeah. I think for semis. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, Meridian, if I'm not mistaken, I know basketball, but also in soccer and I believe lacrosse, they have a great tradition mm-hmm. uh, over at Meridian. A lot of state championships, great rivalry between you all. Uh, was Where was that game? Was it at Meridian? Uh, the regional championship? Yeah. yeah. No, we played that at Brentsville. Yeah, oh, we, we, Brentsville. we were able to, oh, okay. yeah, we secured the one seed going through the regionals, so we got them at home. Okay. All yeah. right. You know, you look at their history, the number of, I guess it was two A state champions. They had won like eight in a row at one point, I think. I know. Of, of two A state championships. So, you know, when they moved up, you knew they were going to be a tough program. When it, You know, when a program has that kind of success, that just doesn't go away. I mean, you have that always in your history. Yeah. And I will say, by the way, when – our basketball team got over the hump. Everybody felt that at the school. You know what I mean? We all yeah, yeah. watched that over the years. I mean, that was, you know, that was inspirational inspirational for everybody in the school to, to see them get over the hump in basketball. Yeah. Yeah. And the and the football team has had a lot of success under, uh, well, not just Lauren, but also uh, not only just Coach White, but before him, uh, was it one of Joe. the wood? Joe? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and before him, you had Ryan Smith. Ryan, right. Yeah, That's what I mean, because yeah. Ryan was at 
with Breach. Yes, he was. Right? Yeah. Yeah, with his brother. Yep. Yeah. So and, and, and when I first moved to Prince William County, um, Brinsfield football was kind of it was like wasn't too good. Not like I say it was a joke, but it just wasn't taken too seriously. Uh they had tradition in terms of things they did. I know, like in terms of like homecoming and, and these parades and all, but I didn't see them winning. But but now they're like rolling, rolling out. Yeah, I and, I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead. No, I was going to say, when I left Colgan to come to Brentsville, I remember telling a couple of friends over there I taught with where I was going. And I remember one of them, a uh, teacher I worked with over there, said, oh, that's great if you don't care about sports. And I think the impression yeah. is you go to a small school like this and, and, you know, the sports don't matter and the athletes aren't great athletes. And I'm not going to pretend that we, you know, across the board, our sports could compete with all the 6A teams. But, you know, but a lot of it in girls basketball, football, girls soccer um you know baseball softball we can compete with a lot of the four five six a teams in the area and we do it every year and i think sometimes it gets forgotten you know this tiny little school of 875 kids you know how good a programs and coaches and kids we have in our programs i mean it it gets forgotten sometimes which is great to you know that you guys are promoting high school sports and people are hearing about us because yeah there's a lot of quality in this building Absolutely. You know, the thing for uh, Brentsville, <clears throat> and I said it to a couple of football players, is I really wish that Brentsville and Kogan would develop like a rivalry. I know you're not in the same class, but the kids come from a lot of the same neighborhoods. And when mm -hmm. Kogan opened, they took some of those Brentsville kids. And, and I just think it would be a great, great, at least once a year. To, to have a football game and basketball and 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 so girl soccer. I mean, I think though just a tradition like I, I don't know. I, I guess who who does Kogan call their natural rival? I think is it Forest Park or Forest Park with Hilton? Like I know years ago, so many of their kids came from OP, they kind of had OP. A rivalry That's with OP. True. Yeah. Yeah. And then in football, it was a rivalry because they were like, just we got to get that one win. That's, each school could get one win if they yeah. get the other one. That's right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. So um, we, I was just going to chime season. in with oh, go the, ahead, rest, go ahead. the rest of the, the soccer, the girls' soccer bracket, because the, I think there's two undefeated teams, Wilson Memorial out of Fishersville, um, Lafayette Meridian, whoever wins that game is going to be good. You, if you guys went out, you could technically see Meridian again. But um, one of the things that you talked about um, and I read about in uh, Inside Nova, I, I, don't, I don't know if I don't think it was Dave Fawcett that wrote it. It was a very good article on your win over Meridian. But you said the, the girls in the first half kind of didn't play well mentally. They can't do that now because the competition's so much better. And the pressure, the pressure. I mean, this is life. And this is fun. They'll never forget it. But what... um. How do, how do you relate to them? Hey, you're out of it if there's another mental lapse, you know, if you play a bad half. Um, how do you motivate these kids to put that through to them? Well, I think, it, first of all, you have to balance the urgency of the situation without putting too much pressure on a bunch of 14 uh, to 18-year-old kids. But um, I think what's always important is kind of, instead of that idea of, you're done if you lose. It's like, hey, what's at the end of the road after three games potentially? Mm -hmm. You know, and if we come out and play our best, I really believe if we play our best, we're very difficult to beat, you know, yeah. it, it, no matter who we're playing. So I think, you know, our focus is really, you know, we need to go out and play the best we can. Um, I told the kids earlier in the year, I'm not big on mottos and mantras and words on the back of shirts and stuff like that. And then I started talking about the kids every time we go out on the field, you know, that game against Patriot, the game against Broad Run, every game against Meridian and, and uh, uh, William Monroe who are kind of, you know, our toughest competitors. We have to go out and compete, you know, and, and I think that's our big thing is that every game we would we want to go out and compete as hard as we possibly can. And always keep in mind, you know, that prize at the end is amazing and wonderful and historic. And it's not something, you know, we don't have a lot of opportunities to do that, you know. Um, you know, so I think that's the big thing is just really kind of keeping their eyes on, you know, what this all means and what it could potentially be at the end of the season. And, you know, hopefully being able to get there and compete for that opportunity. Yeah. You know, Brentsville does have a, a tradition. It, it's, it's, it's been a good program over, over the years. You, I mean, you, you guys were in the, how you advanced to the quarterfinals last year, right? Uh, semifinals last year. Oh, semifinals. Okay. Okay. My first 
my first three years here as a coach. Um, I'm trying to remember if that third year was the shutdown year, but two years in a row. Yeah, I think three years in a row they lost to Western Albemarle in the state championship. And two the of those years I was here, you know, in a year we came out of COVID, two teams didn't go on to the state tournament, and we lost in the regional final to uh, Independence, it was. I mean, this program is incredibly successful. I mean, yeah. you know, you're – you have you can't help but have expectations, you know, when you're a part of this program, whether you're a player, a coach, mm -hmm. parent, whoever. I mean, we all have expectations when you come yeah. to this program because of the incredible success that they've had. Yeah, they won a state championship in 03. 03. Right? Yep. Yeah. Um, 20 years ago. Wow, we were a lot younger. Um. <laughs> yeah, we did, we did some, our second game against William Monroe in the middle of May. We actually had some of that 03 team come back and we kind of oh, sweet halftime. It was pretty cool to have some of the ladies come back that had played on that team. And, you know, they spoke to some of the kids. They spoke to our team and just talked about their run to the state championship and, you know, little hints to keep in mind. And it was a really nice night. It was cool to have those, those women here because, you know, they're the only ones that have ever kind of, you know, done what we're trying to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. I was going to ask you just about just an overall view of your, your team, your front line, your back defense, your goalkeeper. We're really strong through the midfield. Um, we have two juniors that start in the midfield and a freshman that starts as our defensive midfielder. Um, it tends to be really the strongest part of our team. Uh, we have a junior, Peyton McGovern, who's uh, signed to go to the University of Arkansas after her senior year. Um, she's a kid that's popped 29 goals on the year, closing in on 30. Wow. Uh, I think she's assisted on another 14. Uh, Valentina Nardone is another uh, junior. Um, I think she's... He's somewhere around 14 goals and 16 assists on the year. Um, and then our freshman defensive midfielder is also um, great with her feet, can really strike a ball. She's got about seven or eight goals on the year as well. Um, our stats don't look as impressive up front. Um, we had two kids that actually have only played 10 games for us due to injury. Um, and unfortunately, one of our girls that had only played 10 games for us, she actually may have picked up a knee injury. I don't think we're going to have her the rest of the year. Um, so scoring up front, it's really been a combination. It's been six goals here, five goals there, seven goals there. Um, we have another freshman, um, you may know her name, Peyton Brown, who played basketball for Brentsville. Mm -hmm. um, she's our striker, our nine that plays up top in the middle. Um, you know, she's just been a great steady player. Um, I think she's up to like eight or nine goals on the year as well. Um, in back, uh, our back four, uh, they've just been, I mean, just incredibly steady throughout the, the year we had one hiccup we really had a hard time containing uh I think her last name is Houts. she plays over at Patriot she scored a hat trick against us and beat mm -hmm. us three to two we had a really hard time containing her but it was such a great learning Actually, moment for our kids um, and uh but they've been pretty steady all year our outside midfielders again our outside backs it's a sophomore and a freshman the two center backs are juniors we don't have a single senior on the team um so we rely on a lot of those juniors for leadership and our, I mean, our goalkeeper has been amazing. She's yeah, you got a, seven on the year and, you know, is so athletic as a goalkeeper. Great with her feet. What's her uh, name? Uh, Haley Garber. Haley Garber. What year yep. is she coach? She's a junior as well. Man, y'all are yeah. going to be good next year. No offense seniors, but you got a lot of underclassmen. Yeah. I mean, and you know, you hope everybody comes back next year. I mean, that's really the hope, but you never know. But we're very fortunate, again, we have so many younger kids, um, freshmen and sophomore, that have really contributed, have been helpful. And, um, you know, we feel like we're lucky we have a lot of depth, um, you know, an injury here or there. Heck, we started the year, I think our first couple of games, we had 12 or 13 varsity rostered players. And we were pulling in kids from JV to help out because of track and basketball and injuries. So we've had a lot of our depth have to play and play in, in important games that were competitive games. So I think that benefited us earlier. Mm -hmm. Well, no, so now, now coach, so you all have played Meridian what, three times this year? Yes. Mm -hmm. And and won all three. Yes. Now I, I hope this isn't a reverse. If they win, cause they're, they're, they're going to be on the road for the quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so this could be a reverse of, <laughs> you if you guys oh, meet them in the semis i'm not wishing on anybody but 
th- that was what happened in basketball, right? Our, I think our girls lost all of the games to Meridian during the regular season. And yeah. then, so they lost probably the, you're in the same district, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Same. So they lost districts, regionals, and, and then we won in the, in basketball, won in the state semifinals. So yeah. I'm, I'm hoping it's not a problem. I'm, 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 I'm hoping and praying that you advance all well, the way through. We but, wouldn't play them until the state finals. And actually when we were at the oh, really? circle to I, meet as right. teams, I, you know, we kind of joked about that and said, Hey, let's do this a fourth they time. Flipped. That would they be great. Going, I'm still oh, on the flipped. opposite side. Okay. Yeah. Um, one of the things I've always thought, especially about Brentsville and Meridian is unlike now York is, is, is a lot like you all. Cause it's, it's, it's really close to a, a, a metropolitan area. It's, it's right by Hampton. And it's, it's, you know, oh, but some of your, teams that you're playing in in class three are much more rural now Brentsville is rural for prince william but it's still in this metro area and so <clears throat> the some of the young ladies on your team play high caliber club soccer so mm-hmm. they're coming from some of these really great club programs right. and I, i've always especially with meridian when i saw in basketball over the years i was like it's kind of like a cheat code because they're right here playing with all these growing up playing with the kids that are playing class six um and and the same here in prince william county do you think um that has provided you all with some advantage not a big one but just some advantage because the, i mean that you, you girls are, are playing you know uh, some quality opponents like you, you're not going to be afraid when you go play you know a gainesville or some of these uh class six or class three or four t- five teams yeah, well, I've always said, I mean, Brentsville, in the six years I've been here, it's been like an embarrassment of riches of talent for a 875, 900 yeah. student right. school. But, you know, I think I think you kind of hit it on the head when you look, at, let's just take soccer, for example. You got Lafayette, who's a small school in, you know, a well-populated area with very high quality club soccer down there. Yep. You know, they're the defending champions. Western Albemarle for four years, I think they won four straight. You know, mm-hmm. you're talking about them right outside of Charlottesville with an incredibly yep. well-developed club soccer program. You yep. know, Wilson, you mentioned Wilson's undefeated. They're right over the mountain to Charlottesville. They got, yep. you know, uh, Harrisonburg with, you know, developed club programs. You know, so I think when you say it's cheat code, I think if you're a smaller school and you have access to all those club resources in any sport, it really can be an advantage um, over some of the, you know, I was – I almost thought about driving down to scout William Byrd and uh, Magna Vista. And then I realized it was a nine hour round trip. And I was like, I'm not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. You're right, Rusty. I mean, the girls soccer up here is unbelievable. Mia Hamm at Lake Bright. That's a big name. But every I would think, Coach. Ali Krieger right here at Forest Park. Dis- disproportionately, your Division One soccer players are just crazy here with uh, the club and how close we are to, mm-hmm. to all the uh, – you know, the different metropolitan areas. Uh, and and us as high school coaches, you know, we see them for three months. We completely benefit off of the work they put in year round with those club programs and the great coaching they see. I mean, they come to us. Yeah, you know, they're coming to us almost as finished products. And then it's our job to kind of, you know, fit the pieces together and manage the personalities. And, you know, that's kind of one of the tougher things when you're dealing with high school soccer. And you know, we're yeah. blessed because our kids – you know, sometimes high school can be seen as second class. In, These in soccer, yeah. Playing high school soccer. That's and, great. You know, I had a conversation with some of the uh, uh, captains earlier in the year, and I said, do you think anything in club soccer is going to compare to winning a state championship with their high school? And they were all like, no way. No yeah. way. Nothing will compare to that. So I, I have – me personally, I have a great group of kids that really value playing high school soccer. Yep. We've talked about this – year we've talked about this season but i want to get the, uh, our some of our, our our viewers to get a little to know a little bit more about you coach kearns so you are a prince william county kid like you you were, you've grown up you went through prince william county public schools let's learn a little bit more about you so grow you, you you're a graduate of woodbridge high school yep uh class of 90 um and and you grew what sports did you grow play growing up like and did you play youth sports and if so what were some of uh, your favorite sports I mean really up until high school all I played was soccer I mean I started playing soccer okay. years old and you know up until about high school age um you know I exclusively played soccer that's all I really did um and I think kind of at that high school age I probably have a more interesting background athletically than a lot of the coaches you've had on because I never played really at a at a terribly high level 
um, I kind of burned out of playing soccer. Um, I actually broke my arm right before tryouts at high school my sophomore year, and I kind of used it as an excuse to quit. Um, I just kind of, I really wasn't into it anymore. And then I kind of, I picked up basketball, started playing a little basketball recreationally. And um, man, I, I, I probably didn't touch a soccer ball for seven or eight years until I started playing as an adult and kind of all of a sudden got a passion for it again, combined with coaching. Um, I had a passion for it more than I ever did as a kid, but yeah, I played, I mean, I grew up most of my youth. I played soccer growing up. Yeah. PWSI. PWSI. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. That's yeah, my, my daughter was PW side and she moved mm. over there to NV, uh, what is it, NVSC? NVSC, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so and for those that don't know, C- Coach Kearns, um, uh, he he done he's done talking about it, but he not just in soccer, he's got skills, he's on the basketball court. He can he can play, he can play, he can light it up for an old um, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Scott coach coach Kearns can coach Kearns can really play, y'all. He's a great athlete, great athlete. Uh, growing up though did you have um anybody that that kind of stuck out maybe as a mentor and maybe not necessarily in sports but it could have been in school or just in in life anybody you kind of looked up to or or um kind of mentored you yeah I kind of feel like that maybe came later for me I mean you know when I was kind of a younger teacher and a coach starting out I think that's when I really started to find those role models and mentors Mm -hmm. um to be honest, just kind of looking honestly at myself, I don't think I took it serious enough to really appreciate it and and see the value in other people's opinions. And um, I probably missed out on some opportunities with that. But I think once I got older, I got out of college, I started coaching. um, I really started to see the value um, and, and what other people had to say. And I really started to appreciate that. I will. I mean, you guys probably know who Will Robinson is, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah I Coach mean, Robinson. he Great cut play. me, he cut me from basketball. Um, I decided what? to try out as a junior in high school. Um, and he cut me, but it, it, we had all experienced the list on the wall, you know, of who made the team and who didn't. And Coach Robinson actually pulled every kid into the office and he said, Hey man, you left hand, you know, he knew I was left-handed. Me uh, too. And he was like, you know, you need some work handling the ball. You're a decent shooter, but we don't have a spot for you. To the, and I mean, as soon as I started coaching, um, I still remembered that experience because I appreciated him acting like he knew who I was. And I've never posted a list in my life as a coach. I was going to say, I bet you did that in your career. I mean, we sit, you know, gosh, at Woodbridge, we'd have 70 kids try out for soccer. We'd sit there until 5, 5.30 at night talking to every single kid to make sure they were afforded a conversation about where they stood with a team. And if they didn't make a team, um, it, I tell you what, sitting in front of a 15 or 16 year old kid and telling them they're not getting what they dream to get, you have to be really sure of yourself and your decision. I mean, you know, that that was just a moment in my life. But I really took that from Coach Robinson and said, I'll never post a list. No, I'll never post a list. I said, I'm going to sit and talk to every single kid. So I didn't even play for him, but Mm -hmm. he made an impact on me as a coach. Yeah, that's great. That that is great. Yeah, I I remember when when. Leah first started working um, at, at Woodbridge. I remember uh, Coach Robinson was there, and I've officiated his games over the in the year, back in the day. It was some of my early varsity games, but I remember um, he was head coach, but one of his assistant coaches was Breon Dunlop. Oh yeah, and we've, had, we've had Breon on the show, and now he's a and college he, he, coach. You guys, do you remember him playing? Oh yeah, he, was, he played. You, you guys played Bethel um, in the state semis, I believe. Uh, or was that the state championship game? Well, I remember him at ODU when they beat Villanova in the tournament. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, when you were a senior, I think he was a freshman, right? Yeah, was, he was, were you he guys... was quite a bit younger than me. Yeah. 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 But um... which is why, which is why when you had kids like Breon trying out, why I didn't make it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. That, that might have had something to do with it. Yeah. All right. But but you know, we, you were an athlete at Woodbridge. And you were first year at Brentsville, but you have a great history of coaching soccer in Prince William County. So tell us about those years as the head coach at Woodbridge, because uh, I, we were talking about, I remember going to watch some of those, those uh, you know, state level games at quarters, semifinals, and you had some great athletes over the years. Uh, can you talk about that? Yeah, I, I loved my time at Woodbridge, and sometimes I have trouble not talking about it a lot because I mean really as a coach that's where I grew up as a coach 
um, that was the first time that, you know, I was in an environment that was so incredibly competitive with such high level kids. And it really challenged you as a coach to be prepared. Um, I wish I could have been the coach then that I am now, because I think I'm much better now than even as I, you know, that I was in the early 2000s when I was there first at Woodbridge. But um, those were such joyful years, you know, for me as a coach, like you said, we had so many great kids that played at oh, Woodbridge. Yeah. And I mean, I, you know, I think one of the best things about my time at Woodbridge, and I, I hope this is the case at Brunsville down the road is I still talk to those, you know, they're, yeah. I, I say kids, but you know, they're old and some of them are married and they'll shoot me a text with their newborn baby. And that's like, uh, you know, that's what makes it, you know, feel so good about being a part of something because you kind of feel like, well, I must have done something kind of right because these kids still want to talk to me and, you know, tell me what's going on in their life. But, um, man, you had a couple awesome. of great players. In fact, um, I know a couple of Katie and a couple of got recently during COVID got inducted into the Hall of Fame, right? Well, I mean, uh, we had Kristen Leibert um, from 07 to 2010. And I mean, she popped 104 goals in her career and, you know, was just such a dynamic player for us. And um, I'm trying to think of all the names. Of all Jewel. The I mean, Jewel Christian was, God, what a great athlete she was. I mean, she went down to UNC on a track scholarship and walks onto the soccer team. You know what I mean? <laughs> just an incredible athlete and. Uh, there's a kid in 06, 07 named Marky Boyce that, you know, she was, I mean, clearly one of the best players I ever coached. And she went down to Charleston Southern and played. And, um, you know, you we always, a, someone go to Pitt. Yeah. Hannah, Hannah's daughter. Hannah. Yeah. And she was just silky smooth on the ball. And, you know, yeah, she went up to Pitt and, you know, did a great job up to Pitt. And um, Shondell Archer. Uh, you know, she played at the University of Richmond and, you know, she was another great track athlete that could just fly. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, those battles with Forest Park, man, they were classic. I mean, they were so oh, yeah. much fun when both our teams were good and we were battling for district championships all the time. It was it was just a blast. I mean, just a natural high to get out there in a game like that. And be oh, a yeah. part of it. You know, did you um, when you were there, was Alan Ross the principal? Yeah. Any part of, and he played professional soccer, right? Yeah, he played with the diplomats. He's very proud of a picture he has with Pele. With Pele. That's right. Yep. I've seen that. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, my yeah. first year at Woodbridge was a real treat because I was taken over from Mike Yates, who, you know, I mean, he had incredible success at Woodbridge, won a state and national championship at Woodbridge. And yep. then my first year at Woodbridge, and you got to understand, when I took over at Woodbridge, I only had one year of high school head coaching experience yeah. previous mm. to that. And there's Al Ross pacing behind the bench during home. <laughs> right. And it's like, you know, I got this legend, like, pacing back behind the bench during the game. Like, oh, my God, what's he thinking about what's going on right now? So, yeah, it was a little scary at times. Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, I bet. I bet. All right. So, um, it, you know, you, 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 you went to Woodbridge High School. You, you, you went to Radford. Mm -hmm. um and and uh, also joe weakland another woodbridge graduate yep. and, and a coach in prince william county um and then you, you did was your first job out of high school i mean out of college was it at woodbridge or did you were you ever on a middle school level or anything or you... yeah well i actually my first job was at godwin middle school um, okay hampton middle now but back then it was godwin middle so i worked there for three years um my first job coaching ever was at garfield high school i was a jv girls coach um with michelle mcdonald at garfield okay um, and because i was working in a middle school the schedules didn't work out the next year for me to be able to get the practice but i was able to hook on at potomac high school so i was the assistant coach uh jv and assistant coach at potomac for three years before taking over for one year there okay all yeah. right all right now, now um I know you, you're, you're a really great athlete, uh, 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 you know, basketball, soccer, other things. But let me ask you, so I'm going to ask you, can you give me uh, your Mount Rushmore, because uh, I know you're a good athlete, but you also can appreciate great coaching. Who would be your Mount Rushmore of coaches? And it doesn't have to be soccer. It could be soccer. It could be a Bruce Arena, but it could also be a Phil Jackson or, or, or Chuck Noll. But if you had to... To, to look at um, who would you put on your rock Mount Rushmore, meaning four coaches that you would consider some of the greatest of, of all time, or just what you consider the greatest? Well, I mean, these, 
these are pretty personal choices to me. Um, but and they could be local. They could be and Mike I think, Smith and Hampton High School. Yeah. Well, I think you're gonna find a similar characteristic to all the guys that I chose because um I think they're very similar in their demeanor and personality. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I you know, I grew up in the Washington DC area. I was a kid of the eighties and nineties, so Joe Gibbs. You know, I just, yeah. oh, I thought yeah. he was oh. the greatest thing. You know, he got three Super Bowls when I was young and, you know, he was so calm. And mm-hmm. so, you know, he kept it together under pressure. Um, you know, he's always known for making his great adjustments and, you know, able to kind of adjust on the fly. So he was definitely one of them. Um, and another person that just, I just respected his demeanor and treatment of people so well. And I wish I could be more like him was Tony Dungy. Yeah. Uh, and just, you know, I feel like it's such a – I hear football players all the time say, we got to scream and yell and grunt, and you know, because it's such an emotional, physical sport. And here was a guy that just, you know, he he was just so quiet in his demeanor and, and so mm-hmm. respectful and, you know, weirdly almost polite in the way he dealt with players and officials yep. and everything. Um, and then um, probably I'm a, I'm a huge UVA basketball fan. <laughs> so Terry Holland. Um, yeah, wasn't guy who's just classy yes. all the time. And when I was mm-hmm. growing up watching, you know, the Ralph Sanson years, same here, same here. Um, I love Terry Holland. I just thought he was so classy on the sideline. But I mean, I I, I love Tony Bennett. I I just everything about Tony Bennett, his emphasis on character with his with his players, and um, you know, his emphasis on service, putting others first, um, and and getting his players involved in community service projects as well as just being an incredible coach. I mean, I, I really admire him quite a bit. Oh, wow. that is good. One more. Oh, or, 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 or was it Bennett and Holland as your, because you, I won't. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. Holland, Holland would be in there. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's I mean, Holland guys, and like, okay. like Phil Jackson. I mean, you know, how can you oh. not, I like that for the success he had and, you know, go back in the day, the guys, you know, Casey Jones and, you know, Pat Riley on the sideline at Lakers, all those Lakers Celtics finals yeah. that you know, we grew up watching. I mean, you know, seeing those guys in action. I, I totally agree. You know, somebody I now I grew up because I was such a huge UVA fan. I did not like UNC because they would always kind of beat us when, oh, you know, I grew up in the state of Virginia and I'm cheering for Ralph Sampson, Othell Wilson, who's from Prince. Yeah, local guy. Yeah. yeah. And I hated UNC. Couldn't stand Michael Jordan. But as I got older and I learned more about the history of what Dean Smith did in terms of mm-hmm. integration and his character, uh, I really have come to respect what he did. And so, um, uh, and, 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 and so a Dean Smith, but also all of the, the coaches you, you, you've mentioned, um, I, from what I've heard, Tony Dungeon, Tony Dungy, who, you know, played uh, for the Steelers and NFL coach, but never cursed um, yeah. in his, you know, and like, I can't even say that. And I've coached you sports. And, and I, you know, I can't say that today. I mean. Right. I was going to say it right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, uh, no, that is a great list. That is a great list. Kirk, why don't you now lead us into um, some of those questions we like to ask that are not necessarily sports directly related, but it gives people to learn a little bit more about uh, Coach Kearns outside of, 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 of uh, the pitch. Yeah. Um, I always say a peek into somebody's soul is their taste in music and uh, uh, movies, television, that type of thing. Uh, always interesting. It's my second favorite thing to talk about, typically, you know, behind that. And this will give people at Brentsville an opportunity to learn more about you, maybe some of the parents, maybe some of your players. So, um, yeah. And I'm just sitting here thinking, we always ask people about what are you watching or what are you drinking? I watched the movie Heat last night for the first time in a bit. Mm-hmm. I was with somebody who had, who had not seen it over a three-hour movie, but do you have a do you have a go-to movie like, like that is your favorite? If it's on cable or stream, you have to some somewhat watch it. Yeah, well, Shawshank Redemption, I never turn oh, off. Oh yeah. Yes, that never. is it. That, that right. movie, I, I never turn that movie off if it's on. Um if, you know, I teach sociology. If I can slide it into the curriculum so the kids get a chance to watch it, because I think it's yeah. such a great movie, I'll do that. But yeah, Shawshank's probably, you know, that might be my favorite movie. Um, I'm, I'm a proudly a big Star Wars dork. So okay. I, 
again, being a kid of the seventies, I mean, I was five when star Wars came out. I mean, it just lit my world up. So <laughs> yeah, you know, any star Wars movie I'm really into. Um, I don't watch a lot of TV. I mean, my wife and I always joke if it's not sports or HGTV, I mean, we're, we just, we're chasing the kids around so much. We don't spend a lot of time watching TV, unfortunately, but. So, so Lee, oh, go ahead, Kurt. No, I was going to say, what are you watching on HGTV? Because I love those house flipping shows. And I also <laughs> love List It or Love It, which basically there's two people that come in. And one yeah. of them wants to sell it. And the other one's like, I'm going to redo this. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. The I know what you're talking about. I watched I'm, it. I can unfortunately, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So, it's List It or Love It. Yeah. I, we got, Lee and I got into streaming during COVID because we were just stuck in the house. Just so it's a bunch of shows. So she's gotten into streaming and we get, we'll watch some things together. Um, but, but what about Ted Lasso? Have you ever watched Ted Lasso? Love Ted Lasso. Okay. All right. Yeah, no, right. There's, there's one we watch. Yeah, we watch Ted Lasso. Um, it's funny. We got big into Ozarks. During the COVID, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. and I haven't watched the end of it. I don't even know how it ended. Oh. Yet. Get caught up on that. Um, Ted, La- I, I, it's funny because I don't love Ted Lasso because of soccer. Um, I love Ted Lasso just because it's kind of fun. I feel like there's so much on TV and streaming now that's so dark, and I yeah. feel like Ted Lasso is just kind of fun. You know what I mean? It's light and it's humorous, and you know, I really kind of like it because of that. But yeah, I mean, the soccer element, of course, helps. But yeah, Ted Lasso, we we're watching. So Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso is me coaching youth soccer. So okay. when when my kids all played soccer, you know, I didn't mm-hmm. think I could coach. But one of my neighbors coached the team. And one day I was, I said, I'll be your assistant. I'll just, and this is when Cameron was like five or six. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's like, I'm going out of town. Can you coach? And I was like, I don't know anything about soccer. But I had fun that day and we won. And so. The next couple of years, I was a head coach of youth PWSI soccer. Now, when it really got to be fun and easy was when my daughter Sydney played because my boys were just kind of out there. But Sydney was very athletic, very aggressive. But I found when I coached Sydney because she was like a cheat code and some of her friends. But like I found myself being like the Ted Lasso of youth (laughs) soccer because I don't know soccer, but I knew sports i was a you know a, a football coach a track coach and I, I know discipline but i also knew how to make things fun and mm-hmm. so i would i didn't know any of the, the technical stuff and at that age you don't really have to you just get you know you just throw the ball out and up until they're good enough to try out for travel you just go have fun but i made it fun but i had those kids you know kind of you know focused on game day and so i i, I was the ted last one before that ever came out just because i didn't know what i was doing <laughs> you know? yeah but good i'm glad you you, you watched that show yep. and uh and that is that's something let me ask you this though uh, i know you said you don't watch um a lot of TV. You watch, you stream some shows, but you, you 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 like your Star Wars. If you could be a character on any television show or any movie, and and it doesn't have to be a movie that had more than one, you know, sequels and prequels like Star Wars. It could be, but is there any one character uh, that you would that in in the movies that you would like to be? Oh, I mean, a short stint as Chewbacca would have been nice. I oh. mean, um. But another, I, I, actually, another TV. We, my wife and I, constantly watch reruns of The Office. Um, oh, that, yeah. I feel like that would have been a fun show to be a part of. So, you know, maybe getting a bit role on The Office would have been a good time. I mean, you and Amy could have been. Um, Pam. Jimmy Pan. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So that's your new name. So next time I see you and Amy, I'm, hey, remember that. Like, what did he call? Why did he call me? Jim? Why did he call her Pam? That's why. But yeah, that that was great. That, love that show. Yeah. All right, Kirk. What about you? If you were in any a character in any movie, uh, don't don't say anything like uh, Fast and the Furious because you you would <laughs> would you would you I, be? I, I was uh, hoping. Yeah, Vin I, Diesel I like this in the Fast and I, I would be. Uh, I'd be McNulty in The Wire. Mm. Uh, oh, okay. I would love to be uh, Dalton in Roadhouse because he's a badass, a small bouncer. Is. That is one of the best movies ever. It's cheesy as hell. It's got terrible acting, but it's a it guilty really pleasure, good. though. Oh yeah, you got to watch guilty Roadhouse. pleasure. Yeah, Dalton, Dalton is a bouncer at a, some double deuce as a club. The owner, by the way, is um, the dude from the show Emergency uh, back in the seventies. If you guys ever watched that. Um, 
And then um, I just thought of this. Look at all the stuff Forrest Gump did, man. He played football at Alabama. I don't know that I was going to be or not, but he went to the White House multiple times. And uh, so, yeah, but uh, I, I've been watching The Wire again. So I love that show. Um, Buck Moreland or, or, or McNulty? Yeah. I, so for me, I would probably be almost anything that Denzel movie he's been in but i'm gonna be denzel is usually the good guy but he got the oscar for training day so i would be denzel and training man, day i love training day man on fire those are yeah. great flight yes Book of eli Action. i mean yeah. those are flight? Great movies. have you seen flight yeah oh, oh yeah. yeah he's great yeah. Man. Uh, that's one of his best he's yeah. not exerting revenge on people i like the movies where he's like you know vengeful and getting back yeah what was the one he somewhere? did was it two guns was that with um yeah, yeah. Oh, is it uh, Wahlberg? Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, Mark, Mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg. Marky Mark. Yes, yes. yes. I'll have to look I that see, one up. I don't know that's that. That's New Kids on the Block. That's what. Oh, okay, but it was Wahlberg. Two yeah. guys. That was good. That was good. Okay. All right. So. Um, yeah. Now, I don't know if you have Spotify or Pandora, but it keeps track of what you play the most. There's there's apps that bring that out. Um, what do you think? Your top four, five, six songs are. Oh, four or five, six songs? Yeah, uh, or um, artists, or artists. Well, I, I mean, I'm a huge fan of 80s rap music. Mm-hmm. So, I mean... Uh, we are, too. Yep. Public Enemy, I love Public Enemy, EPMD. Um, you know, I kind of hit my limit with, you know, rap to a degree, but uh, Snoop yeah, and I, Dre, I, I love them as well. Nas, a little Nas. After um, like the mid to late nineties, I was like, yeah. Yeah. after it, Biggie, it, and- it was done after that. Done after <laughs> yeah, that. I mean, um, but I love that kind of music. And then, you know, I really, I feel like I have pretty diverse tastes. I was big. I love Pearl Jam, Stone Temple Pilots, some of the nineties grunge bands. Yeah, that was kind of like my college period. Was like Snoop and Dre and Pearl Jam and Stone Temple Pilots, and you know, some of that alternative music that was big in those days. But I think my go to is probably to put on like. I'm a Pandora guy, which I know sounds really old, um, but uh, yeah, Public Enemy Radio is <laughs> probably what. Yeah, I was okay, in the car. absolutely. Cool. Yeah, you remember oh, your nice. first real concert? When I say real, because Rusty, I saw a couple of people at Bush Gardens. I don't consider that real. You remember your first real show? You might have went to the Patriot Center or something. I think the first concert I really saw was out at. I mean, they didn't call it Jiffy Lube back then. I forgot what they called it. Nissan, back then. probably Nissan. Yeah, Nissan. But I think, yeah, a couple Buffett concerts. Um, yep. uh, band called Toad the Wet Sprocket. Yep. Which yep, yep. completely got overshadowed by the Cranberries that were fantastic. They opened for them. They were amazing. I actually saw Pearl Jam out there at uh, Nissan. Um, way back in the day, I don't even know if you remember WHFS. It was yeah, like a of course. Yeah. Rock. Oh, yeah. yeah. They had their HF Festival. You know, they had all, they had like 30 different bands play. Yep. I mean, I was there a couple of years. That was a lot of fun. Um, but those were probably some of the earliest ones I ever saw. L- Lollapalooza was at Lake Fairfax. and I was, was it really? Yeah, well, here's the thing. I was in a thrift store, and this girl was probably 17 or 18. She had on an original Lollapalooza Lake Fairfax shirt, and it had like red hot chili peppers, just yeah. unbelievable. And I just said to her, that's a collectible. So the line was long and I Googled it and looked at it and it was very valuable. But um, I was going to say that um, mine was Duran Duran. So well, yeah, yeah. I remember that was 83. And um, oh, I saw in excess at, Excess at Radford when uh, Kick just came out. It hadn't, they never played it an arena that small again mm-hmm. that was a great show man at, at the Debman center yeah. very small arena and then they played roanoke later that year i saw them in roanoke and yeah, I my parents my parents were taking me to concerts in 1983 <laughs> no that was 87 that was 87 <laughs> and did you see them in 92 or 93 when in excess did you go to that hf festival no i i the two i went to 94 and 95 i think were the okay. two ones i went um yeah. I don't know if you remember the Rollins band, the Henry Rollins band. He's in he's in Heat. He was in the movie they, last night. They they have a song called Liar that's really like bass heavy, slap bass heavy. I thought RFK was going to fall down when they played that song. I oh. mean, it, you could just feel the vibration in the whole stadium when they played. But yeah, it was 
I mean, that, those were great concerts. So many different bands and a lot of different genres. That was a good time. Yeah. You should check out South uh, Southwest by Southwest, whatever it's called, down in Austin. That is on oh, yeah. the weekend. Oh, Austin's a great city. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, cool. Man, well, Scott, this has been great. One last question. One last question. And, and, and I, if you've seen the show, you may have seen some of our answers to this, but we haven't used it a lot all the time. But let me ask if you won one, $5 billion. So after taxes, you've got $5 billion. Mm-hmm. Well, what big, are you going to do with $5 billion? I'm glad you asked me this question because I have a dream job. Okay. And, and my dream job is to start a nonprofit that provides funding for athletics in high schools. And if I oh. ever won $5 billion, I would start that nonprofit. Because, I I mean, 27 years of coaching in high school, so many people think, well, Prince William doesn't. I don't know how it works in Loudoun and Fairfax, but Prince William County Schools don't fund athletics. That's all pretty much done by ticket gate and stuff like that. And I, th- I yeah. think people don't realize, you know, what a grind it is to, you know, buy uniforms and make field improvements and buy equipment. Um, I've always said if I, I have two things I would do if I won that much money, that would be one of them. I would start a nonprofit to help fund athletics throughout the state of Virginia. Um, and I think the other thing I would do is I'd buy every farm that was up for sale in Noakesville to try to preserve some of the open land. So we're not building a bunch of houses out here. <laughs> That's yeah. the other Good luck with that. Okay. I know. Yeah, so those, yeah. those are my two big plans. I'd love to give it. Wouldn't it be just fun to just walk into stores and, you know, pick up people's groceries and say, hey, let me get that for you today. I oh, think it's just yeah. be so much fun to give away money. And Sha- Shaq you know, does that people. all the time. If you ever looked at his show on HBO, he does it all the time. Yeah. I mean, well, that's, I yeah. hope I hope, Scott, if you do win five billion, you hook this brother up. Cook and Burn oh, show. Yeah. We'd have real producers and all that stuff. <laughs> you, you'd have a studio of a lifetime. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, what about this? Now, are the Commanders your favorite football team? Would you have put in a bid with Dan Snyder? Uh, they're my favorite football team. I don't know if I want to get into that mud, though. Um, <laughs> right. I mean, I'm, I'm, my wife is from Pittsburgh, and I always joke oh, for – I mean, we met close to 20 years ago, and I'm always like – at least marrying into a Pittsburgh family gives me something to do in January because the yes. rest of the class <laughs> right. do anything. It's been a rough go, but I don't know if I'd want to get into that buzzsaw. Okay. I might All have right. paid five billion bucks to get Snyder out. Out of there. Right, right. But yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Oh, well, cool. Well, look, uh, thank you so much, uh, Scott, for joining the show. You have been great. I know uh, this was a lot of fun for us, but I'm hoping uh, the folks that watch this, I know the Brentsville and just Prince William County community uh, uh, had as much fun as we did in, you know, in interviewing you and having you on the show. Uh, is there anything you'd like to close with, uh, Scott? Is there anybody you want to acknowledge, thank, or shout out or promote um, uh, anything at this time? No, I just, you know, we talked, you know, prior to the show starting, I'm just so thankful that, you know, we have people like you that are still promoting high school sports, you know, it's getting tougher in the newspaper industry. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, their staff. It's a better there. product, man. It's um, a better product. Yeah. It is, it's just, um, I'm just so thankful. We got people like you that are willing to talk to people like me about high school sports. I think it's such an important part of a kid's life and, um, you know, and in particular for our school, like I said, you know, we're, a tiny little school about a quarter of the size of all the other schools in the county and you know sometimes we're forgotten it's really great for you guys to promote us as a school because we have so many fantastic athletes and some really great programs so thank you for that um I mean, go Tigers, man. Well, look, thanks again, Coach Kearns, uh, for the Kirk and Bird Show, for my co-host, Kirk Hilliard, uh, Phoebus Phantom, um, and for Scott Oh, Kearns. no, Phoebus. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> they're, like, they're like the Phoebus. thorn in our football team's side. Holy but, smoke. But they're going to four. Is, Phoebus going is going up to four. So yeah. you guys, it cleared the way for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. For but, uh. <laughs> So, yeah, Kirk talked to him about moving up to, to help Brentsville out. <laughs> yeah, but uh, for, for for my dog, Kirk, and my man, Scott Kearns, this has been the Kirk and Bird Show. We are out. Goal!